G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're uh, installing a 42 inch ST4K steady light bar onto the, uh, the Ford Ranger here. Um, we're gonna be taking through a step-by-step -step process, um, so stick around. Cool. All right, so let's take you through what you actually get with the kit. So you, you get the wiring harness. Um, so the wiring harness is all ready to go. It's, it's literally plug and play. Um, you get the light bar itself, and obviously that plugs into the wiring harness. You get different types of brackets, so depending on your application. We're only going to probably be using a couple of bits and pieces out of this because we are using the Rhino rack bracket to mount to the, uh, to the roof rack. Um, additionally to that, I actually bought a specific uh, Ford Ranger slash Ford Everest wiring harness so basically you unplug the wiring harness from the headlight plug that in and there's no cutting or splicing also i've bought a separate light switch so it does come with one um, if i can find that um, but it is quite a uh, terrible looking switch and i like the uh, the factory look that you can get with light switches these days so i bought that so we'll wire that in as well all right so the first part of the install is mounting the bracket to the light bar then we're going to mount that to the roof rack um, we're mounting the bracket to the light bar using the supplied nut uh, and allen key. So with the Rhino rack, uh, light bar bracket, it comes with four of these nuts that sort of slide into the channel here, right? Uh, and then what happens is that they've got bolts that bolt them through. Now, Hot tip is that don't slide these into the channel just yet. We'll actually put them on the bracket and then slide the light bar in. It'll make it much easier. Alrighty, so now we are putting in the light bar. All right, so we've encountered our first problem. Looks like the awning bracket is a little bit long and it's stopping the light bar from sliding so we can actually get that centered on the roof. So I'm gonna to have to take off the awning, uh, trim that down a bit, and then, um, then we can reposition the light bar. There we have it. So I just it's all centered now. I've got 85 mil on each side. Um, so now we'll uh, we can screw that off nice and tight, uh, and then we can then refit the awning. Alright, so now we've mounted the light bar, we're going to be running the wiring harness. So what I suggest first is that you actually plug this in to the light bar uh, at the top and then that'll then determine where you're going to actually position your relay. So we'll go through, plug this in uh, and then from there we can then work out where the other wiring goes. All right, so what we've done is we've just removed this, uh, this wiring harness here, uh, which threaded onto this um, uh, bolt that came through the firewall, uh, and then mount the actual um, steady relay onto that. So it's all nice and secure. I've used a uh, nylon lock nut as well. Uh, and then with that wiring harness, we'll just use some zip ties just to uh, tidy it up. 
All right, so we've positioned the relay. Next up is we've got to uh, wire up the headlight. Now, as I said before, this is a, um, a harness that steady cell, uh, and it just simply just plugs into the existing one without any need to splice or anything like that. So what we'll do is we'll, I'm gonna remove this splash tray on the, on the top here, because there's a fair bit of stuff going on behind the headlight. I've got a couple of circuit breakers here for the dual battery system and also my Anderson plug uh, for the back of the car, which has created a little bit less space. So um, I think this is probably the best way, a little bit time consuming, but we'll remove that and then we can get proper access. I think Ford could have used any longer bolts to hold on a little bracket. Look at them. Alright, so down here where you can see the screwdriver, that's the back of the headlight where this um, plug plugs into the back of that. Now the harness simply just plugs into this side and then plugs into the uh, into the harness here itself. Um, but I had to definitely take off that bracket and made it a hell of a lot easier uh, with that bracket removed. Otherwise it would have been quite a, uh, a difficult job trying to uh, get, get my hands in there. Alright, so now we've uh, plugged in the piggyback harness to the back of the headlight. It's just a matter of connecting up the wire coming from the relay to the piggyback harness. And it's just simply using the white plug and plugging it in. Quite a firm fit. And that's it. Alright, so next we're running the wiring for the in-cabin switch. Now the good thing is with the steady loom, is the actual switch can be separated. So it just simply unscrews, and then you pull that apart. So that's the only part that you need to feed through the firewall. Now what I've got is um, a bit of a coat hanger. Um, and I've, I've just folded over the end, um, just so it's not so pointy. Because um, you don't want to be, you know, when you're going through the firewall, you just don't want to be you know, probing some wires that you don't need to be. So. Um, that should be fine and also a bit of silicon spray so that spray a bit of silicon spray on the actual um, coat hanger itself and it just makes it easier to get in and all right so this is where the uh, the grommet is down here so this is on the uh, on the battery side so the passenger side um, so that's where we're going to be poking the wire through um, and then um, on the inside of the car um, we should see it poke through just in the uh, in the footwell So now we've poked the coat hanger through the firewall, it's just a matter of pulling the cable through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be just um, taping this uh, cable on to the actual um, coat hanger itself. Now what I've done is I've doubled it over so that the actual tail, you can see that, um, is actually pointing backwards. Because uh, this is the thickest part and it is tapered, uh, hopefully that should pull through easier than if you're trying to put it through like blunt nose in. So we'll just tape this on to the actual um, coat hanger and don't be afraid of putting on a good amount of tape because when you pull it through there's quite a fair bit of pressure uh, that's going to be on it so we'll give it a good wrap tape this all the way on and with a bit of luck we should be able to pull that through
All right, so onto the switch. This switch uh, we're not using, we're using the, uh, the push type switch. Um, we've just got to change the wires over. So this one's got three wires, this one's got four. Uh, the fourth one being uh, connected up to the illumination circuit um, in the vehicle, uh, which will illuminate this um, at when you put the lights on. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go through now and cut them off and join them up. Right, so we've twisted all the wires together. Um, so now it's just a matter of uh, putting a little bit of solder on each of them. So we just uh, dab a bit of solder on here. Doesn't need to be too much. Just sort of just to um, get them to, to stick together. Just like so. That's it. And then from there, we'll just fold them over, like so, and slide the, uh, the heat shrink over them. And the finished product looks like that. So we'll just get a bit of uh, heat on them now, shrink them down, um, and then we're right to start running this, uh, this part into the, uh, into the dash. Now I've installed the light switch, it's now just a simple matter of just plugging the two together. So this is the wire from the switch and this is the one that came through the firewall. Once we've screwed that all together, it's just a matter of now tidying this up behind the dash. Uh, and then also now we've just got to run the, uh, the wire to the dimmer switch. So what I've done, I've connected the blue wire to the purple wire, uh, which is the illumination for the four wheel drive switch. So when you turn your lights on, uh, your actual switches will illuminate. So the final part of the installation is wiring up the positive and negative up. So I've already gone ahead and wired the positive to the positive side of the battery. Uh, and the negative is actually not wired to the negative side of the battery, but it's actually wired to the earth. Uh, now we, all we've got to do now is test it. Alright, so steady light bar all done. I'm really impressed the way it turned out. Um, it throws a really good amount of light broadly, um, but also distance as well. You know, sure you're gonna get some better um, light distance wise if you use some spotlights, um, but you know, the, the 42 inch light bar on top of the roof uh, is plenty for what I need. Um, it's really gonna be good, especially when you're off-road and on some uh, tight tracks. It's gonna, you know, really light those tracks up really well. Um, the wiring harness made it super simple to install. Um, perfect lengths, so you know, credit to Steady. The only thing I would recommend is definitely upgrading that light switch. Um, the, the one that comes on the exist on the on the on the loom itself um, isn't that great. Um, and if you're really after a factory look, um, definitely upgrade to that that light switch. Um, it was about an extra twenty or thirty bucks. Um, you, you can choose uh, the design that you want as well. So. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed and got something out of that. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, please leave them down below. Uh, and until next time guys, we'll catch you around.